All right, we are finally done with section 1.1. Now we're moving on to section 1.2. Um, section 1.2 is analyzing the graphs of functions and relations. So we're just looking at some graphs and seeing what we can determine and what we can gather from those graphs. Um, the essential question, what we're trying to learn is what types of information do graphs of functions give us? Okay, they give us a lot, so we're trying to figure out what types of information that is. All right, so what we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn how to use graphs of functions to estimate um, function values, to find domains, ranges, y-intercepts, and zeros. All right, so let's get started. All right, so let's see here. It says example one, okay? The, the problem looks much more difficult than it is. All right, so let's see what we get here. It says the function f of x equals negative 5x squared plus 50x. So this graph is this equation. <coughs> it approximates the profit of a toy company where x represents the marketing costs, so on the x-axis, okay, so if we look at this, the x-axis down here is marketing costs, all right, and it says f of x, or y, represents the profit, so on the y-axis is our profit, and if we notice, it's in ten thousands of dollars, all right, so both costs and profits are measured in, in thousands of dollars, use the graph to estimate the profit okay so we want to know the profit so that's our goal is so we weren't trying to figure out what the profit is when mark marketing costs are thirty thousand dollars so marketing is on the x-axis we want to know what profit is when we our marketing costs are thirty thousand so our tick marks go one two three four five but it's in ten thousands so to get thirty thousand we would just take our tick mark and multiply it by three. So our third tick mark would be three times 10,000 to get 30,000. So at three, what's our graph equal to? What's that approximately equal to? <coughs> so I don't believe it's right on the 100 mark. Okay, it's, a, it's probably a little bit above it. So let's, I don't know, do we want to approximate it? That's either 105 or 110. Okay, now, that's not just $110, it's in 10,000s. So let's just pick one. Let's do let's do 110. But we have to multiply that by 10,000 to figure out what our actual approximation is. Okay. So 110 times 10,000 and that will be our approximate on money. So 100 and so one oops, what happened there? 110 And then we have how many zeros? Um, four more. So four more. One, two, three, four. <coughs> so one million one hundred thousand dollars is our approximate. Okay. So here is our approximate. And all we did was look at the graph to get there. Now it says confirm your estimate algebraically. So now we're actually going to figure out what it is algebraically. So now we have to use our equation. So it says f of x equals negative 5x squared plus 50x. And what number are we plugging in for x? Well, what do we use? We use 3, right? So we're going to plug in f of 3. So negative 5 times 3 squared plus 50 times 3. Okay. So what do we get there? So let's see here. Let's go down a little lower. So here 50 times 3 is 150. 3 squared is 9 times my negative 5. So we have negative 45 plus 150, which equals 100 and what? So equals 105. So f of 3 is equal to 105. Now, what is 105? We have to multiply that by 10,000. And what does that equal? And that's our actual, not our approximate, but that would be our actual then. Which I said, well, I put 150. Actually, 105. That was my fault. So this should be 105 times 10,000. So 105 times 10,000 is 1,050,000. 1, 0, 5, 0, 0, 0. So 1, 50,000. So were we close? Yeah, we were close. Remember at the top, we, we, we said it might be 105. We actually picked 110. So here, 
1,100,000 as the approximate and 1,050,000 as the actual using our algebra. All right, so we're going to use the same graph now. Now we're just going to do it the opposite way. It says use the graph to estimate the marketing costs. We want to know what our X value is when the profit is $1,250,000. So our profit equals $1,250,000. Now, I want to figure out what that is on my graph because this is in 10,000. So I need to divide this by 10,000 in order to figure out what, what number we're looking at. So let's do 1, 2, 5, oops. <coughs> 0, 0, 0, 0, divided by 10,000. So we should be looking for 125 on our profit. So where's 125? So this goes by 25s if you know 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. So here's 125. So what is our graph equal to at 125? It's right there. It's at the maximum of our parabola. So if we go down here, we should see that it would be 5 or that would be 50,000. Okay, hopefully that, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. All right. So... How would we do that algebraically? Well, you have the equation f of x equals negative 5x squared plus 50x. And we know that f of x is our profit. And what was our profit this time? Well, it says it's 1.25 million. Well, we're actually just going to use 125. So 125 equals negative 5x squared plus 50x. Okay then we can we can rearrange this and solve for our x and you can see that you will get five as our answer but this one's really easy just go to the graph go down see that it's equal to five so our marketing costs are fifty thousand dollars for this one i'm not really worried about the about the algebra okay this one's really easy to check out the graph all right so let's move on okay we're going to save example three for the classroom so save this. Don't write anything here. We'll do this one in class. So don't forget. Remind me. <coughs> uh, now we're going to start with example four. Example four and five are really important. We need to be able to write what the domain is and what the range is using interval notation. Okay. Okay. So don't forget. So domain, okay, deals with x values. Okay. So x goes left and right. Where does the graph start and where does it end on the x-axis? So if we notice here, this arrow means it's going to keep going to the right more and more and more. It's never going to end. So our domain is negative infinity to the left, and it goes all the way to the right. And where does it stop? There's not an arrow here. It actually stops right here. Well, what, where is that? Okay, so here's 1, 2, and 3. So it stops at 3. And if this is a closed circle, we know we need a bracket. Okay, so that is how you do the domain. Remember, domain is x values. Now, for range we're going to use y values. So we have to look at up and down. So where does it start? Where does it end? So we're going to go down below. This arrow going down means it, it down forever. It goes to negative infinity forever. It never stops. All right. And we go up to the top. Where is the top most point? Well, we have a point here and we have a point here. That's as high as our graph goes on the y-axis. So where's that point at? So here's 1, here's 2. So it stops at 2. And it actually touches the line, so it is equal to. So we're going to use our bracket to say that it includes 2. All right, so there's the domain and range. Let's do one more example of domain and range, and this is pretty important. Okay, so here we're going to write domain, range. <coughs> All right, so domain. Remember, domain are x values. So what is our, where are our x values? Where is the least most x value? Okay, it's right here. So here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, notice negative 3, but it's an open circle. So I'm going to have an open negative 3. It goes all the way to 1, then it goes down, okay, closed at 1, then it goes down to 1 again, and then it goes forever in the right direction. So hopefully you can see that that's positive infinity. Okay, the arrow pointing all the way to the right means it never ends going to the right. All right, let's do the range now. Remember, range is y. Arrow going down means this goes down forever and ever and ever. So negative infinity. And then how high does it go? What's the highest point that it goes to? Okay, so one, two, three. Notice that this, this point and this line are all at one. So it stops at one, but it is included because it's actually touching the one line. 
Okay, so there's domain and range. Domain is X, range is Y. All right, example six. It says use the following graph to approximate the Y intercept, then find algebraically. Okay, what does it mean to be, have a Y intercept? Well, where does the graph cross the Y axis? Okay, this blue line, where does it cross the X axis? Well, the Y axis, well, it crosses the Y axis right there. What is that value? Okay, so it's at one, two, three, four. So our Y intercept is Y equal to four. Okay, now we want to find that algebraically. Okay, F of X equals X squared minus four X plus four. And I just got that from my equation. <coughs> and what do we know about Y intercepts? Okay, well, let's, let's think about this. This point right here, if we know that the Y value is four, the X value is always zero. Any point on the Y axis, X is going to be zero. So if I plug in zero for my X's, that should tell me what my Y is. So zero squared minus four times zero plus four. Zero squared is zero. Four times zero is zero. So plus zero or minus zero. It's actually should be minus, but it doesn't matter. Plus four. So at zero minus zero plus four, that is equal to four. So there is my, I did it algebraically, and I did it by just looking at the graph. All right, so if, you put, if you're finding the y-intercept, so you might want to write this down. If you're finding the y-intercept, x equals 0. Okay, very important. All right, last example. Okay, use the following graph to approximate the zeros. Well, zeros is another way of saying x-intercepts. That's why I put that in parentheses. Then find them algebraically. Okay, so where are the x-intercepts? Where does it cross the x-axis? Well, this one actually has three. Okay, crosses that three spots. So the one in the middle is zero, the one on the right is one, and the one on the left is negative one. So let's see if we can prove that those are the x-intercepts algebraically. So f of x equals, and I'm just writing my equation, x cubed minus x. So the last one, when we were finding the y-intercept, x was zero. But what happens if we're finding the x-intercepts? <coughs> y equals zero. So if we're finding the x-intercepts, y is zero. Remember, y and f of x are the same thing. So 0 equals x cubed minus x. Typically, most of the time, when you're finding x-intercepts, we're going to have to factor. Okay, so let's think about this. We, you did this kind of a while ago. So let's factor this right-hand side. What can I remove from x cubed minus x? Okay, well, hopefully you can see that I can take 1x out. So if I take 1x out of x cubed, I have x squared left over. And if I take 1x out of x, I just have 1 left over. Okay, so we're almost done. So 0 equals x times, now I can fully factor x squared minus 1. So x times x gives me x squared. What two numbers multiply to be other to be negative 1? Hopefully you see that it's positive 1 and negative 1. Okay, so here is my full factoring. x minus 1 equal to 0 should be positive 1. x plus 1 equals to 0 should be negative 1. And when it's just x by itself, that just equals 0. And there is our three x-intercepts. So when you're finding x-intercepts, y equals 0. And you should probably 99% of the time factor. And when you factor it, you will get your, your zeros. But for this one, you can just kind of simply look at it. Negative 1, 0, and 1. Okay, so that wraps up section 1.2. <coughs> we analyzed graphs. We got a lot of different information from this. So this is part one. We have one more part for this series. And I will see you tomorrow.